and welcome to Creatively Rich. I am your host, Ann Tipton, and I have Sheila Devi with me. Sheila is a career transition coach at Two Steps Forward. Uh, you can find her over at SheilaDevi.com. And one of the things I want to talk to Sheila about today is an amazing Instagram project that she has come up with called, it's Two Steps Forward, right? It's Two Steps Dot Forward on Instagram. Awesome. So tell us about it. Oh, thanks. So Two Steps Dot Forward is a project that I launched about a month and a half ago. And the idea is basically that there's no one way, that's the title of the project, that there's no one way to get anywhere. And so basically uh, on Instagram, there's, you know, for those of you who may not be as familiar with Instagram, um, it's visual imagery, just visual images. And so each person um, who partici participates in the project draws a visual sketch of their career path. So lots of folks have interesting career paths. One gentleman started in serving restaurants, then became a chemist working in paint, then temporarily worked as an entrepreneur, um, helping people with video production, simultaneously working as a fine dining server, went back to nursing school and is now an ER nurse. So there's an idea often that my clients as a career coach have that people have figured out what they want to do when they're 18 or other people all got places in a direct path when in reality people have really interesting stories of how they really got places. So this project is hoping to kind of pull the veil back and show how people really got to where they are today. That's amazing. And it, it's one of those things where I didn't feel like my path was very interesting. But when we started talking about it, it's like, oh yeah, it was pretty like pretty jaggedy, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Will you give the quick, quick rundown of your path? Um, if I can remember it, yeah. Um, so I started working in restaurants at a very young age. My my very first job, my 16th birthday, I was making pretzels in a pretzel stand. Yes. <laughs> um, and I kind of followed that path for a good long time, worked through restaurants in college, mm -hmm. graduated from college with um, a, a liberal arts degree and realized that I couldn't get a job because it was just as the economy was crashing. Yes. Um, in, well, it was 2005. So right. it was a really rough, rough job market then. Um, ended up being a nanny for a little bit. Um, I was, you know, I had four children, um, 50 hours a week that I took care of. Wow. And, <laughs> yeah. And then um, from there, went into restaurant management, restaurant management into finance, finance into what I do now. So, yeah. Amazing. So that's, folks, how really people, get, get, people really get places. And, you know, we may or may not talk more about this at some point, but my path was a professional actor to a professional cook to a hotel concierge and now a career transition coach. So these are real life stories about how people actually get to where they are today. Yeah. So tell us about the, that path that you took, because you have really, I mean, one of the things that I really admire about you is you are really led by your heart and your passions. And that is not something a lot of us are brave enough to do. So tell us how, how that passion has kind of led you where you are now. Ah, gosh, that's an interesting question. Um, so when I was 12 years old, uh, going way, way back, I, I auditioned for my first play, um, theater like school play. And there was, I was one of those people who was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Actually, that, that conception that we have, that, that idea that people figure it out and then they're in it from beginning to end, I did that when I was 12. And I was like, I'm going to be an actor. And I stuck to it. I went to school for theater. Um, I was a professional actor for, you know, really about 18 years um, from when I was 12 until professional, you know, later in that pro process. But I went to college. I left college. I was an actor. And then along that path, I had some curveballs happen because, again, that's what happens in life. And so kind of my big turning point in my personal experience was that um, in my late 20s, most actors have day jobs and I um, was working a great day job, but I actually, it, it really allowed me to do what I wanted to do in the evenings and to be an actor. Uh, but I got fired from that day job. It was a, a really scarring experience. Um, I felt a lot of shame and embarrassment and actually did not openly admit that for a long, long time. Um, but in that moment when that happened, it was kind of a turning point for me because I said, I don't ever want to have a day job again. I want to spend the majority of my hours doing what I really want to do. Um, and I have always been a person who's been kind of following like what I love to do. That's been really important to me along my way. But all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, like what am I going to do now? Um, and so in that, I decided that I was going to go to culinary school and I became a professional cook. 
gosh, do you want me to keep going on this path? Like tell the full story now? Okay. All right. So here's how it went. Um, so I became a professional cook only to realize that it wasn't what I really wanted to do. Um, that I actually did not enjoy being a professional cook. Yeah. So you went all the way through culinary school. I graduated culinary school. Yes. And I can decided. make a mean fill in the blank. Yes. I went all the way to culinary school, through culinary school. I became, so I live in Chicago. We have a, a trendy restaurant area called the West Loop, if anybody knows it. Um, and I literally was a line cook. So that meant when you placed your order, I would be back in the kitchen. I would be cooking your meal um, at a trendy restaurant in the West Loop of Chicago. Um, that is insane when I think about that. <laughs> so pretty quickly, I realized that wasn't for me. Again, um, kind of embarrassment um, about making a career path change, going to culinary school and then realizing I didn't want to be a cook. Um, so I kind of, again, had to go back to, had to, wanted to go back to um, the drawing board. Like, what am I going to do again in my life? And so I put the pieces together and decided that I was going to become a hotel concierge. And it made a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Um, was really good at it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Because again, I've really been driven by doing things that I love in my life. Um, but because I was good at it, I kind of went to the top of that industry in a short amount of time. In that kind of industry, there's very little challenge once you've kind of risen, risen to the top of it. And so roundaboutly, I decided I'm going to go to coaching school. And again, roundaboutly, I became a career transition coach. Now, not surprisingly, given everything that you've heard in that story. <laughs> it's amazing, though. I mean, it's, I, it's, I think it's, wild. it's so refreshing, though, to know that, like, <clears throat> you know, I feel like generations before us had a pretty pretty easy time deciding what they were going to be when they grew up because there were just weren't a lot of options. And for, for us... Sure there's just not that, that straight path of, you know, you do this one job for 30 years and then you're done. Yeah. And it's, it's multifold. Um, one, there are more options for us in this world that we live in. There's also a lot of reasons, you know, at prior points in history, companies were more invested in their employees. And so employees stayed for longer amounts of time. And that's really changed as the economy has changed, employer investment in employees has changed. And as a result, people feel a lot more, uh, a lot less invested and a lot more able to make different career decisions as they go along. So people are constantly making um, career changes at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, we, we have so many options that it's easy to say, okay, I'm going to give something else a try for a while and see how that goes. And it's not devastating for a career like it used to be. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me about this, um, this concept of plenty that you yeah, believe. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I think I believe in my life and also that I talk to my clients a lot about is this idea of we live in a world of plenty. So we can choose to live in a world of plenty or the other idea or the other alternative would be a world of scarcity. So the idea of a world of scarcity is that there's not enough to go around. So that might be there's not enough jobs to go around. That might be there's not enough money to go around. That might mean that there's a not enough eligible you know, you know, men or women to go around. That's living in a world of scarcity. And so what happens when we're living in a world of scarcity often is that we're competing for that thing that we really want. And so that's the kind of idea of, um, you know, elbowing or feeling like competitive or maybe um, sometimes uh, like the person who, who holds on to that piece of information um, because they want to be the one who has that piece of information or they, they want to make sure that their boss knows that, you know, that was their idea or whatever that might be coming from a place of scarcity versus coming from a place of, of plenty where there's there are plenty of um jobs to go around there's plenty of money to go around there's plenty of you know potential partners to go around in which case then we can honestly let go and relax and trust that will attract if that's a whole nother concept but will attract an opportunity that's that's meant for us that there's there is something for us out there just as much as there's something that's for somebody else so in in that case you know, I work with a lot of people who are applying for jobs. Um, and in a world of scarcity, if somebody else gets the job, that can be devastating because, you know, there may not be another position out there. There might not be another role like that for the next six months. But in a world of plenty that you could actually congratulate that person because that was that person's opportunity. And for you, really trust and know that there's another opportunity for you and that that wasn't yours. That's, that's kind of the difference between a world of scarcity and a world of plenty. Mm. That's really, 
That's really important. And to me, that, that, that links so closely with this idea of just this feeling of richness, that everybody's got yes. enough and that there is enough to go around. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when we trust in that, again, you know, I kind of referred that there's a separate concept in that, but people talk about the law of attraction. Like if you can trust and believe that, that there is, you know, fill in the blank for you, um, you know, a, a, a job that allows you to feel challenged and like you're making a difference in the world um, and really put that out to the universe, it's, it's likely that you can attract that versus feeling, oh my gosh, there's not enough positions, in which case you're also kind of putting off another sort of energy that says like, oh, you know, this, this kind of energy is not as, you know, come to me as, as that other source of energy. And so if you can, if you can put out to the universe that there's something that you is, is meant for you out there and really like put radiate that it's, it's more likely that that's going to come to you. Absolutely. So as we're wrapping up here, is there any advice that you have other than, you know, living in a land of plenty uh, for somebody who is scared to make the next step or, you know, really wants to move forward in this rich life and doesn't know how to do it, what advice do you have? Yeah. So the first thing that popped in my mind was this idea of um, getting clear on what you want. Um, so, you know, I, I referenced back and it, it might seem odd that my whole life I've kind of said like, you know, I followed my heart and like really wanted to love what I've done. Um, and some people might find that odd, really. But I, it, it has led me to a lot of really satisfying, even if they've not um, ultimately been the most long lasting, it's each experience has been super satisfying because I've always wanted to do what I've done. Um, and then from there, I've continued to learn from the experience. So, you know, we, we didn't really kind of talk about this section or this idea, but, um, you know, one of the things that happened as I was making those different career steps is that each one made me clearer on what I want. So for example, I didn't want to work nights and weekends anymore. I did that a lot as an actor and as a cook and as a hotel concierge. Um, and so when I became clear that that's, part, that's not part of the vision of what I want in my life and became clearer on what it is I do want, which is ultimately to have more flexibility or perhaps, you know, to be able to spend, in, you know, those holidays and important occasions with people that I love, when that, when I became clear on that, what I want, that can be, become part of my decision making process. Um, and so as you're thinking about like what you want, again, in, in opposition to, to what you need or what you should have or whatever, that clarity of what's important can become part of when you have a decision to make is this thing that I want is, am I going to get that from this opportunity? Absolutely. And so whether you're coming at that from a manifesting perspective where you believe that the universe is providing, or you're just coming at that from like a scientific human boots on the ground kind of perspective, that, totally. that energy makes a huge difference regardless of where, totally. where you're looking at it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Sheila, thank you so much for being yeah. on the show. It was such a pleasure to have you.